Yesterday we talked about the Niji Sanji contract that was leaked and it was an absolute shit show. Today we're going to be talking about why one of the Niji Sanji VTubers should be terminated by Niji Sanji unless they're playing favorites. That Niji Sanji talent being Luka Kaneshiro. Now I'm going to preface this video by saying I don't wish for anyone to be fired. I just wish Niji Sanji would stop saying there's no favoritism in the company when there clearly is. So for this, we're going to have to take a look over at Raziel, who is an ex-friend of Luka Kaneshiro. They tweeted out this whole post here, but we're going to have to look at the image they attached to it for some context. They attach this part of the contract, which is Article 6, the subcontracting, saying one, Party B shall not subcontract all or part of the VTuber activities to a third party or jointly with a third party except with the prior written consent of party a two in the event that party b subcontracts all or part of the vtuber activities to a third party or jointly conducts these activities with a third party in accordance with the provisions of the preceding paragraph party b shall impose on such third party the same obligations as those of party b set forth in this agreement and shall be jointly and severely liable with such third party for the acts of such third party now raziel said i never saw the niji sanji contract but if this is true, this would make a lot of sense why he was so weirdly secretive about me and I wasn't allowed to speak to others at all, especially when trying to manage his projects outside the Luxian Park. I was given his company email, which he told me he would be graduated if I told anyone I had it. But... I needed it to access his Minecraft account. He also started clearing out our Discord messages. Just for reference, I tried multiple times to do this the right way by contacting AnyColor and Luca. I was not hostile, but they both ignored or ghosted me. I was merely trying to sort things out privately, but Luca refuses to acknowledge my existence now outside of taxes, where he still won't even address me by name. But yes, I more or less managed Luca before Nichisanji, and that continued into him being Luca. Not only did I do projects, I often advised on his game choices, made popular game lists for him, and more. Tweets, stream ideas, kept him on track for streaming. I literally would wake him up or had to convince him to stream a lot as both Luca and Luca. Make rules for his stream and more. I wasn't just a mod and any color did not know about my activities as I did try to reach out to them multiple times to be advised on certain situations and how to proceed, such as the ring fit stuff. But Luca nor any color was interested in helping. Raziel then tweeted out this image here of sketch designs of some Luca Kaneshiro art, saying, I don't know what happened to the text on this tweet, but he would have me help him decide stuff like like art for his merch. This was his birthday merch art and we did not choose the foot image by the way. That was a misunderstanding by management and he was rightfully upset about it. Adding on, I would help advise on his outfits. The lion hoodie cat thing was based on fan art he really liked of Gilgamesh from Fate Go with basically the same hoodie, showing these designs here. Continuing, he would get my thoughts on upcoming promotion slash collab slash marketing stuff, showing an image of proposal for co-branded meal from Ike Eveland, showing one from Luca Kaneshiro as well, as well as one from Mista, and another from Vox. There's also this one for Shu as well, and then this image of Luca. Raziel added on, he would send me screenshots of private chats between the libraries in their own private discords with no management to get my advice. In this one, he was complaining about how no one aside from Shu was helping him plan out the first Luxium anniversary. Nothing crazy, just proof. These messages show Luca saying, hey everyone, since the anniversary is like two weeks away, I'd like to start talking about what plans we have for it and how it'll go. Should we go by default order or reverse it going from Vox, Mr. Ike, Shu, and me? I'm actually getting a VR chat world theme park made. Pretty sure all of you have already figured that out. Would definitely love if we can go through that during the day. I was thinking since it's VR and I do plan to have fireworks in the world, it would be good to the end of the day with it. And again, I believe most of you will be together IRL, so you might have other plans. At everyone, also on that note, we'll be together in Japan early January, so you guys want to do an off collab stream? Shu saying, oh yeah, I suggested on the Slack too, but if we can play Nintendo Land, it's a great game on the Wii U, and it's a five player game, so it'd be fun. Fox said, I think that'd be great. Honestly, after the anniversary, doing more as a unit would be lovely. I think because a lot of us have been struggling, Luxium hasn't really done much for a while, and it'd be great to feel more like a real unit again. Lucas saying, we can set up collabs, yeah, I was thinking doing a Mario Kart game with all the boys. Since Hugo will graduate next week, we'll honestly have enough room up until Iluna. At the same time, I feel like it may be a bad move. And then Luca asked again, does anyone have plans for the anniversary? With Shu responding, I don't have any plans so far, apart from that Luxium Channel one-year program. I think other groups have done like rewatches of 
debuts and stuff if y'all want to do that and Lucas saying yeah I was thinking that too. Raziel also tweeted out this is a screenshot from Slack that Lucas sent me of a manager admitting they would have been fired without the success of Luxium and the message says to be honest I bet everything on EN. If EN had not succeeded I would have been fired so I'm extremely grateful for your daily cooperation. Raziel saying and please know I don't blame this person I would like to keep my job too and would be grateful to the people who helped me do that. It was a sweet sentiment but in hindsight holy shit so yeah i don't blame this manager for saying something like this at all honestly but it does make it understandable why there is some favoritism for certain groups inside of nichi sanji if it weren't for certain individuals managers would have been fired nichi sanji english might not even be a thing anymore and so i asked over on twitter yesterday if there was no favoritism in nichi sanji then why hasn't luka been fired if all of this information is true because clearly he has been breaking nichi sanji contract and it's all being leaked to the public now there are people inside of nichi sanji that have been fired for less so why is Luca Kaneshiro still there and just getting a slap on the wrist some people replied to me saying or Uki the contract talked about termination for racial remarks and anything that damaged the brand and that's correct why has Uki not been fired or even suspended for anything that he has said against white people that has damaged the brand and made a lot of people upset with Uki and Niji Sanji as a whole so why has Uki not been terminated suspended or you know given a stern talking to maybe he has been but I don't know either way probably should be suspended for the actions that he's had. Uki also hasn't even apologized yet, so you know, there's that as well. Someone else said, I don't think this is even Luca's fault. Man just wants advice, but the company clearly states they won't help out with internal talent issues which is a problem in itself. Like, yeah, I, you can't blame Luca for wanting to share this information or wanting to talk to a close friend about it, but that is a problem in itself of Niji Sanji. Why are they not, you know, helping with talent disputes or internal issues that are going on? That's why the bullying stuff that Selin talked about is allowed to happen inside of the company because the managers just do not care. It seems like they have no code of contact for what happens inside of the company, only what happens outside of the company, like when they're streaming. It's all they care about. As long as these talents are bringing in money for them, they don't care what happens to them. Someone else said the same thing can be said about the voice packs. Pomo only got two, Alira 10. I don't know if I want to start a rumor or anything, but it definitely seems like Riku Tazumi likes Alira maybe a little too much. So yeah, again, I don't want Luka Kanashiro to be fired, but based on Niji Sanji's, you know, contract and stuff, he's broken the contract and should be fired at the end of the day but please let me know what you all think about that situation down below before we move on to the next segment though i would like to take a look over at today's sponsor memoria productions memoria productions is a vtuber agency that is dedicated to supporting the next generation of virtual talent their mission is to quote produce and empower creative minds to pursue their ideas and goals in the world of entertainment they want to connect talented and creative minds to everyone and share their ideas and visions with the world as of right now they have not released their first generation of talent but they are planning on doing so in the future they do currently have auditions open if you want to take a look over at that if that's something that you're interested in so if you'd like to check out a new vtuber agency consider checking out memoria productions now i want to take a quick look over at ghost data who is someone that we talked about in the video from yesterday where they said that they had a song that they had made for niji sanji that just never got released and they were going to release the contract in 2025 when they were able to do so i still think they're able to release that contract whenever it's up but they are not allowed to release a song like they had wanted to they ended up speaking with a lawyer and came to the decision that no they cannot release that song it is owned by Niji Sanji now and they they tweeted out some other things and have finally said deleted the tweets I don't want anyone to go after the liver at all because they did not do anything in any way whatsoever the fault lies in Niji Sanji simple as that putting it to rest and just going to move forward caution and legality comes into play learning lesson so in this situation no one should really be going after the talent it's only Niji Sanji's fault for why the video would not be posted as are a lot of things inside of Niji Sanji a lot of it's not the talent's faults it's really just the fault of poor management and an awful fucking company that contract is damn near illegal now I would like to take a look over at Sayu because we talked about her yesterday talking about a uh, silencing contract one that she only was given about three hours to sign and the reason we're talking about this again is because legal mindset actually went over that contract and how awful it was and how illegal it sounded. Niji Sanji was trying to get Zion and Sayo to shut up and never share any information to the public about her time in Niji Sanji or what happened when she was terminated. And in case you don't believe Sayu's the one that gave Legal Mindset that contract, here is a clip of her talking about it. Yeah, I think Legal Mindset's a really nice guy. Like, we had a good chat, you know, it was really nice. He, um, you know, he kindly asked me and I said, you know what? It's been, in the, it's been only under my eyes for a very long time. So, you know, honestly, um, I kind of just wanted to give people so in case uh, people weren't aware um i gave legal mindset um a lawyer on youtube the way the the 
um, silencing contract. Yeah, because yeah. I gave him my silen- the, the silencing contract I that I was uh, that I, I had. A lot you know, it. that someone I knew that was asked to okay, so this sign is where it a long time ago. Follow, too. But yeah, uh-huh. so that's what happened. Oh no, what the heck is um, nitrate? I'm and sad. so uh, I'm I gave it to him with the basis of mm-hmm. I'm not interested in any more drama stuff or whatever. Okay. I'm not doing it for drama. Yeah, I'm not doing it yet, for the sake of like trying to put more stuff out there. I am literally doing it because that is the last thing. That is the last thing Ooh, that my friend saw. But now can make the and that is the last thing that fireball needs, ever needs to be part of it. Again. Remember how he got so much amber? So yeah, base Sayu, good on her. She's doing really amazing right now. She is closing in on 100,000 subscribers. So huge congratulations to her on that. Please let me know what you all think about this situation down below, and also the other ones that we talked about in this video. And have yourself a wonderful rest of your day. Bye bye.